One of the most important uh, things for the sound of a drum kit, ask any single drummer, it is the snare. Every time a drummer picks a different snare, it is like the whole drum kit has changed. If you listen to the to the you know audio that you're recording of it. Now, because the snare is so important, the same thing goes for the reverb on that snare. And today I want to show you guys some ideas uh, around that you know what what you can do with reverb on a snare drum. And I'm also going to show you my own favorite all-time favorite reverb for snare. So let's get started with that. All right, so over here I have a very simple uh, drum recording. Let me um, set everything to zero again. This is already mixed. It's not mixed by me. It is recorded in Sound Vision Studio, so that's pretty cool. Here's, here's how, the, how the drums sound for the mix that they made this mix for. So pretty cool stuff. Um, the reverb you are hearing right now uh, consists of three different uh, sources. The first one is a Lexicon 300 reverb, which I actually just made a deal on on a reverb unit, but it will take a while before it's here. But the 300, the overheads and the room mics. Now let me show you this. Let me disable the 300 so that you guys can hear what, what the room mics are doing. Listen to this. So the rooms already make a, a huge reverb sound. Now, why is this? Well, let me show you guys this. It is actually um, because the room that I'm talking about is actually this room over here. And this room is very, very, very big. And this also very reverb, reverberant, reverb, reverberant. Yeah. Now, of course, that will make uh, the most natural sounding reverb. I mean, you cannot get a more natural reverb than a natural reverb, of course. But let's be honest, most of us aren't in the luxurious position to have drums recorded in Sound Vision Studio. Even I am not in that luxurious position. I mix tracks for other people from all over the world that have recorded their own stuff. It, I rarely mix music coming from Sound Vision Studio. It happens, but not a lot of times. So we have to do it with something else. So what I'm going to do for this uh, demo is I'm going to disable the rooms. Now the overheads also produce a bit of reverb because they are recorded with ribbon microphones, which uh, have a figure of eight pickup pattern. I mean, if I turn them off, then it's completely dry. And with them turned on, we have a bit of reverb, but that's okay. Now the extra reverb they have added is a Lexicon 300. I don't know which setting. But it's just a bit. But let's remove that one for now. So you guys know what, what the original was uh, used in the track. And let's show you a few things that, that I could do with such a snare drum. Now the first thing uh, that you could do is of course pick a, a digital reverb, uh, whichever one you like. Uh, I really like the Pro R, not only because it's from FabFilter, uh, but also because it's, it's really easy to control. Uh, it's got very good presets actually. I, uh, I don't really like to use presets, but with reverbs it, it's different. I really like to use a preset as my baseline and then work from there. Um, so it's got very good presets and I like to, you know, be very minimalistic in the plugins. So, um, you know, if I pick a reverb, I want to have a reverb that is very versatile as well. So this one is super versatile. Now what I'm using right now is a snare plate reverb. Didn't think I've changed something on it. 1.6 seconds, 1.7 seconds. Perfect. Let's listen. And what you now hear is that actually it sounds like the whole drum kit is in a way bigger room. It's in like almost like bigger room than Sound Vision. We can even make, make the room bigger than that. So that's pretty cool. We can also turn down the reverb time a lot. So it's like we're drumming in the basement.
So you get a whole different taste. Another thing that I like to do is use a short reverb and make it very, uh, you know, a bit, bit longer reverbing on the harsh mid frequencies. And maybe also do some post EQ on it so that's also boosted. Give it a bit more early vibes as well. And I do this for the sole purpose of uh, giving the drummer uh, more energy, giving the drums more energy. Another thing that you can do is use a gated reverb. Now for the guys that don't know what a gated reverb is, let me, let me make one. It is uh, very 80s like. And what you actually do after the reverb, you make a, uh, you insert a gate. And what I like to do is to sidechain that gate. So that you get this. It's a very 80s thing. What you could even do is turn off the original sound. And make, make a whole new reverb or snare source yourself. Or combine it, of course. But this will sound a bit dated. Uh, I won't use a gated reverb or not like this on a modern day pop record. Uh, because it, yeah, it will sound a bit out of place, I think. I do have to say that sometimes I try to sneak in a gated reverb to boost the energy of the snare drum, and, but I will combine it with, with a normal reverb as well. So for instance, I could use this one with it, so. Maybe even the original sound vision. So there are a lot of different, well, I, I like to call them feels, I like to call them tastes that you can create by just playing with the reverb on a snare drum. Like, like this is so zoomed in, but it makes such a big difference. It's almost yeah, like, Prrr. now I do have to say I have a personal favorite when it comes to snare reverbs. I'm really in love with this one. Only sad thing is that thing isn't blonde, it's actually black and I like blonde. Now let me show you this one. It's um, this one. It's a Yamaha SPX90. I actually, I have two of them. And um, the, the XPX90 is actually not a very good uh, reverb if you look at it from a technical point of view. But if you use preset two, which I'm doing over here, preset two, reverb room, reverb two room. And only this one is, uh, is a bit... Uh, and only uh, adjust the reverb time. That's the only parameter you should change. The rest, just keep everything the same. It gives a very great character to, uh, to a snare drum. Now these, these uh, SPX90s, they sell for like, like 80 or 90 euros, I think. Maybe, maybe 100 euros. So it's also not a very expensive uh, reverb. Although I do not know what will happen with the prices after I post this video. But let's hope I'm not that big of an influencer. Now right now I've got it set to 1.6 seconds. And here's how that sounds. That sounds kind of, kind of trashy, but it's, that's actually what a drum kit wants. And what I find really interesting is how the SPX90 adapts to the snare drum. So if you put a different snare drum in there, it will also work. It all, almost works. It is actually, if I need to do a live uh, front of house um, job, I always try to take an SPX90 with me just for the snare drum, just for that reverb. Now let me show you what happens when I uh, adjust the, the, uh, the time. It's, it's not a lot, but it's a really important setting to, to fine tune it. It's the only setting to fine tune it actually. Let me show you. So we are at 1.6 right now. Let's turn it down. I mean, how beautiful is that? I mean, yeah, I, I really, I re I'm really in love with that reverb and that's, 
really also the reason why I have two of them. Like, if one would break down, I would still be able to, to create that certain reverb on my snare drum. I, I'm a bit crazy, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm really crazy. Now, what I want to say is that, you know, don't follow my advice on my taste on, on that SPX90, or maybe do it if you if you like that, that kind of sound. It's it's really like the, the possibilities, <laughs> really when it comes to reverb, possibilities are endless. And, and if you are crazy enough to think about a certain sound or a certain feel, it is possible to make that one. Like there are enough tools to, to create that certain shape that certain signature, your own signature on a snare drum. And I'm just thinking about my own signature, which is the SPX90, which I just told you guys is. So now it's not my secret signature anymore, but who cares? I only care about making the world sound better. You can think about crazy uh, sound ideas, but on the other hand, and that's a bit of a, yeah, not so cool thing. The sounds that we create, should also be commercially accepted. So you can make a very crazy, like you can make a spaceship kind of, wait, let me let me make a crazy, let's go crazy. If I would go crazy, I would, well, not eternity, I would create a... Yeah. I would create a really long reverb and then I would uh, run it through the Saturn and I would do... Do something like a bit shorter. I will do something like this, like. I would automate this. I mean, I mean that that's how crazy you could go. But then again, do the people that are going to listen to it in the end understand what you are doing? Probably not. And then, you know, you are pretty quickly moving towards the experimental area. And to be honest, I cannot go too far into the experimental area because I mix tracks from other people and I have to uh, make them adapt to a certain genre that they are in. For instance, this drum track is a pop track, bit of rock, but most of it, yeah, it's, it's a pop rock track. It's not experimental. It has to sound like every other pop rock track. Of course, with my own signature, but it has to be a tiny detailed signature, not a big, um, experimental, revolutionary thing. There's not enough room for that. You're always working on the balance between, between creating new stuff and making sure that people will understand it. And with that being said, I want to end this video. So thanks a lot for watching this one. I hope you guys got some inspiration uh, from this one. I actually don't know if there's an XPX90 plugin. If there is, I should do a snake oil video on it because I really, really, really love the XPX90, the original one. And, um, and I would really like to see what what the plugin manufacturers would do. Because I've got two units and they both sound a bit different actually. So how could they model that one? Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know your cool ideas in the comments below and I might make a video on it. If you like my efforts and want to support me, you can do that on my Patreon campaign. I will link it over here. And I try to give you guys some things in return. Most thing you get in return is better content and early access to the content and yeah, there is some other stuff over there. So uh, check it out over there. If you want to see more of me, you can do that over here. Don't forget to subscribe, keep pushing, and I will see you guys again in the next video. Bye-bye.